until I talked to him about it. But perhaps he didn't know that. Perhaps no one ever talked to him or heard. Tax fear cannot be made upon an action that was done under the threat of harm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, except for the one who was forced to say kufr and his heart was full of faith. So in other words, let's say that I come around the school here and somebody has a gun in my back and you don't know it. And I say to you, I'm no longer a Muslim. I, do. I am not Muslim anymore. And they say, you're thinking in your heart he's a Catholic. But you don't know the guy behind me has got a gun in my back. I'm just kidding. Takfir cannot be made upon an act that was an emotional burst. The Prophet وسلم, said that the man who lost his camel in the desert and later found it said, God, you are my servant and I am your servant. The Prophet did not say this man was a Kafir, even though the statement is Kufa. Ibn Hajar notes that this man was overcome with joy, so his statement was an abbreviation. So, for example, this also applies sometimes. Someone will say, I'm divorced. And we all know how if you pronounce I'm divorced so many times, according to Islam, then you're divorced. But it has to have the intention behind it, folks. And this is something we need to realize. You, 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 if you're in a fit of anger and it's not really your intention, then it doesn't count. But, you know, people want to hang on to the letter of the law instead of the spirit of the law. And that's why it's so important to understand these things. Just because someone's group is not from the Allah Sunnah Jamaat does not mean they are Catholic. For that reason, the companions pray Janazah, funeral prayer for the Kawaraj. Now, the Kawaraj people actually were believing that Allah was created, and this was a big deviation from the truth of Islam. But even that, they pray, they pray Janazah for those people. So I really want you guys, just don't call anybody a Kafir. And I think I'm giving you enough proof. Yes, this is. Yeah, according to this, we can't say they were not Muslims. Yes. What is Khawar? It is a group of Muslims, um, early Muslims, who are known for deviating in some of their thinking. Like the Shia? Or? Not like the Shia. What I'll do, if you'll remind me, is I'll teach more about the Quranage on another day. Okay. Inshallah. They did not collect the spoils of war from them, but gave it to the deceased family according to the Islamic rules on inheritance. Ibn Taymiyyah says that this proves the companions considered them Muslims. So what I really want you to try to adopt is a spirit of love and compassion. If somebody says, I'm a Muslim, and he puts his head on the ground and he has a rukun on the ground when he prays, a little stone, or he does something different to you, don't say they're not a Muslim. You don't have that right. Say they may not be on the same understanding as I, but you do not have the right to say they're not a Muslim unless they tell you I'm not a Muslim. Making tech fear on others without knowledge is a major sin. So to say someone is a kafir without them say it or absolute proof somehow, and the best thing is just to avoid it. These are all major scholars that I've taken these quotes from, folks. I'm talking about old, old scholars of Islam. Yes? So the people, the Saudi government that has uh, declared that like the Ahmadiyyas and the Ismailis and people like that that can't come to Hajj, this is a flawed way of thinking? Well, according to the majority of the scholars, it is absolutely a flawed way of thinking. <laughs> You see, for example, the, the Shia believe that there's a divine imammate, that there are 11 divine imams. We as Sunnis do not believe there's any divine human. But can I say they're Catholic? No, I cannot, based on the majority of the scholars. So if you want to build bridges, folks, if you want to come to common terms with people, if you want to enjoy good relationships, then don't call people Catholics. And I think I've given you sufficient evidence. So even if they are the idolaters? Even if they are they the are idolaters? Ever, ever. You don't want to call them Catholics because you don't know what's in their heart. Okay. okay. You don't know what they're being compelled to. Yeah. What does it say in the Quran? If an idolater comes to you, invite them 
to learn about Islam. If they don't accept it, take them to a place of safety. Every human being that encounters another Muslim should be safe. The safest human being in the world should be a Muslim. If the Quran tells you that if an adult comes to you to make sure they're in a place of safety, then isn't that a powerful statement of who we really should be? So we need to open our hearts to be more accepting and affirming. The Prophet Muhammad was accepting and affirming. There is no takfir for major sins, only in certain situations. Takfir is to be made in most cases by a qadi, and not a lay person, or even a mufti, as noted by Khalil. The reason for this is because in the classical age, this implied a loss of rights. Secondly, a lay person accusing another of kufar falls under, can you help me, Nijma, with this word? Kaf. Kaf, which is false accusation. which is a major sin. So I just want to touch on that and then we're going to go back. But this is obviously a big part of what we're talking about in these verses in the Holy Quran. We just cannot be going around judging people. The best thing is to judge ourselves. So back to the tafsir. Whoever disobeys or commands others to disobey Allah is committing mischief. So when it talks about the people committing mischief, I'm going to be talking about some of the things that are actually considered as mischief. Being ungrateful to one's master or creator and going against his commandments is a spiritual sickness. That is a mischief. Okay? So when it says they don't go about the earth sowing mischief, that is one of the mischiefs right there. Concealing disbelief for the sake of worldly gain and not having the courage to speak out for truth is a disease of the soul. So when it talks about diseases of the soul, then when you conceal disbelief for worldly gain, this is a big sin in Islam. The hypocrites can become paralyzed from his fear of being exposed. So verse 10 says grievous is the penalty they incur. So the hypocrite will be punished in this life and in the hereafter because of the misery they live with for fear that they are going to get exposed. We all know that when we're not congruent, we usually walk on eggshells, scared to death that somebody's going to find us out, right? Verse 11, and when it is said to them, do not make mischief on the earth, they say, we are peacemakers. The activities of hypocrites produce chaos and disorder while they pretend to be men of goodwill, peacemakers. Oral claims don't determine whether one is working for order or disorder. What thief calls himself a thief? So a person's not going to come to you and say, I'm a hypocrite, right? Most people aren't going to walk up to you and say, I'm a hypocrite. Although, I, I do, I often tell people I'm so worried that I'm a hypocrite, but this is actually a good sign, because it's a sign that you recognize that you fail miserably in many, many ways. But a real hypocrite is not going to come and say, listen, I want you to know I am a hypocrite. They're going to try to convince you, they will try to confuse you, they create an illusion that they're actually the best person in the community. You know what I'm talking about, folks? Is that a yes or a no? Yes, yes. Okay. absolutely, totally. All right. It all depends on what one does, not what one says. These two verses describe their insensitivity and ignorance. They regard their defects as merit. So here they are as hypocrites, but what they say to you is, I'm the peacemaker sister. MashaAllah. And they try to convince you, oh no, I'm just about Allah's business. I just want to do whatever is best for the community. Meanwhile, they will see all kinds of things that take place in communities. Look at the history of communities. So someone will say, I just want to do what's best for the community. And then let's say there's a piece of property over here for sale and the community wants to buy it. What they'll do is slip in and buy it so that the community will have to pay them twice as much for it. 
but then they'll say I'm about the business of the law. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. And they actually think they're doing something good. The hypocrites commit mischief by disobedience to Allah's prohibitions, abandoning what Allah made obligatory, and doubting his religion. Allah does not accept deeds from anyone unless they have faith and certainty of truth. And this is so important because Allah in the Hadith al-Qudsi said Allah is pure and he only accepts that which is pure. And this is something we really need to think about, folks, because your heart needs to be pure or Allah is not going to accept your deeds. And this scares the bejeebies out of me. You know, it, it really drives home how we have to be so conscious of where our heart is. We need to have our finger on our, the pulse of our heart at all times. Otherwise, we can easily fall into hypocrisy and acts of hypocrisy. So when it says that we are peacemakers, being with the right wing and the left wing at the same time, they support those who deny a law by thinking they are doing righteous work. So when they were saying we are peacemakers, what was it saying in the verse? We say we believe, but when we're with those evil ones, we say we're with you. So these people, they said we're peacemakers, but what were they doing? They were trying to walk on both sides of the fence can't do that and be a successful Muslim. In Surah 4, verse 144 and 145, O oh, you who believe, do not take disbelievers as allegiance, protectors or intimate friends, instead of believers. Do you wish to offer Allah a manifest proof against yourself? Verily the hypocrites will be in the lowest depth of the fire. No helper will you find for them. So this, folks, should be a warning to us. It should be something that scares us. That you want to make sure that you never allow yourself to enter into acts of hypocrisy. When you find yourself speaking out of both sides of your mouth, you should be afraid. You should feel very uncomfortable because you're acting like the hypocrites. Verse 13, and when it is said to them, believe as the people who believe, they said, should we believe as the foolish believe? Verily they are the fools, but they don't know it. Now who are these people, who are they talking about? No, 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 who are they talking about? When they said, when Allah said to them, believe as the believers believe in Allah, who are the believers? Jewish people. No, the believers were the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So imagine, folks, just imagine. Look at the hypocrisy here. That Allah is saying, believe is the companions. And they're saying, what? Those fools? Can, can you imagine for a moment calling the companions of Rasulullah Sallallahu fools? Why well, can be in the heart of a person that they can refer to the companions of Rasulullah Sallallahu as a fool. I mean, that takes some real chutzpah. Does anybody know what chutzpah is? Okay, yeah. That takes chutzpah. So, believers, the believers believe in Allah, His angels, His books, His messengers, resurrection after death, paradise and the hellfire, etc. And obey Allah and His messenger by heeding to His commandments and avoiding the prohibitions. Now, I want you to think for a moment because here we had this pagan society and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu came on the scene. How much harder do you think it was for them to believe in the Messenger of Allah than it is for us 1,435 years later? It's much more difficult for them. Much more difficult for them. For, we've got 14 centuries of people practicing Islam that paved the road for us. Those people came from a pagan society. Those people gave up everything they had and trusted total iman in this word that they were receiving from Allah and his message. It's really profound. I hope you will process that and think about that. That they were calling these companions foolish people, these foolish people that bought the messenger of this prophet from among themselves. Yet the hypocrites answered by saying, shall we believe as the fools who believed? 
Here the hypocrites are referring to the companions of the message of Allah. The hypocrites are saying that they have the same status, are following the same path, while they are the fools. So here they're telling you in one minute, we are the peacemakers, and then they're calling the companions of the Sunnah and Solomon fools. You see, we have to listen, folks, because there are people like that around. They'll tell you one thing, mashallah, Brother Alhamdulillah, Allah, you know, Allah is so good, mashallah. And the next thing they're talking about the Imam. Of course, nobody here has ever witnessed that, right? Absolutely. So they're on both sides of the fence. They're from the east wing and the left, the right wing and the left wing. You have to watch out for this. The fool is the ignorant, simple-minded person who has little knowledge in areas of benefit and harm. This is why, according to the majority of the scholars, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the term foolish to include children when he said in Surah 4, verse 5, and do not give your property which Allah has made a means of support for you to the foolish. So they don't know what can benefit them and what can harm them. And this, there's another great lesson in this because the reason that I say this to the young people here, the reason that you want to obey your parents is they know what can harm you and they know what can benefit you. And until your amygdala is fully developed, your frontal lobe of your brain, you sometimes forget what can harm you. And you're so in denial of it, you cannot see it. So if your parents are practicing Islam and they're telling you to do good things, you want to obey them because they are your amygdala. They're your frontal lobe. They're your guiding lights in a world of darkness. Allah answered the hypocrites in all of these instances. Allah said here in verse 13, Verily, they are the fools. Allah also says in verse 13, But they know not. The hypocrites are so ignorant, they are unaware of their degree of deviation and ignorance, and the danger of their situation. A severer that causes blindness, deafness, and spiritual heart failure. These hypocrites are further away from the truth than one who is aware. Verse 13 places before the hypocrites a criterion of true faith, iman. The Arabic word anas. You know in the verse, kulaudhiyurabbinnas, manikinnas, means the man, the mankind. The every word nas, people, here again is referring to the blessed companions of the Holy Prophet. Because these men and women embraced the faith when the Quran was being revealed and accepted without any doubt that it was the word of God from an unlettered man. This verse indicates that the only kind of iman, faith acceptable to Allah, is one similar to that of the blessed companions. And that the iman of others would be worthy of the name only when they believe in the same things, in the same way as the companions did. When I was working on this class, I began to cry when I read this because I thought, how far is my man from that of the companions? And also often folks, we say we love a lot, but we do not do what we've been told to do. We do not obey Allah. And then we disobey Allah. So I want you to really take this kernel today that this is what it means in Surah Al-Baqarah when it's calling us to a man. Is it, it is the iman that the companions have. It's not a weak, murky, old dishwater kind of iman. It's an iman of the strongest people is what we're being called to. The very companions of the prophet. Not any man where we say, well, I know I'm Muslim, but, and then we go and we do this, and we go and we do that, and we, it's an iman of the companions. Listen, folks, I'm not making this up. This is the genuine, authentic tafsir of these verses.
The iman of the companions is the litmus test for Muslims. Any belief that deviates from their faith and practice, however pleasing it looks or good in its intentions, is not valid according to these verses, the Sharia or the Sunnah. So, you know, I worry sometimes because I tell my students, I accept you for where you are in your journey to Islam. And I absolutely do. I want to create a safe place for you. But that doesn't mean that I'm reinforcing you to stay where you are. What I'm doing is encouraging you as your imam, as your brother, as your uncle, as your father in Islam, as your grandfather in Islam, to develop the kind of demand that the companions of Rasulullah had. That's my vision for you, every single one of you. Not the kind of demand that wavers, not the kind of demand that one day I'm doing this and the next day I'm doing that. Fools, the word sufaha in the Arabic. Historically, those who try to guide the, those who go astray in the fool's eyes, the guides are stupid and ignorant. Who is more ignorant than the one who refuses to see clear signs? It's like being on I-4 and it says Lake Buena Vista exit and you say, no, 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 that's not Lake Buena Vista exit. That's the Buena Park exit. You ever heard of those people that argue with a stop sign? Anybody ever heard of those people? So who is more ignorant than the one who refuses to see the clear signs? As this tafsir is being unfolded to us, as we are seeing the kernels and the deep heart of these words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are signs. The word ayat means signs. That's what it means in Arabic. But in looking at the deep meaning of this, it is a road map. It is a map quest for us. If we don't change our lives, folks, this is actually permission for us. So my, I beg you and I pray. And also, I just want to say, if you have a comment about what's being said, then we'll do it. But a number of people have been complaining about a lot of comments they can't hear, and it's disrupting the class. So I am going to ask you to hold your questions to the end of the class. Write them down, and then I'll address them, okay? Thank you. Verse 14. When they meet those who believe, they say, we believe. But when they are alone,